Each year, more than three million people from around the world visit Yellowstone. They come to see the most famous geyser in the world. There are hundreds, thousands of wonders here, really world-class wonders. It's been two centuries since that first Euro-American walked through this awe-inspiring land. Seventy of those 200 years were used exploring and establishing it as a national park. The remaining years have been spent trying to balance nature with park visitors. It's a process that's still being learned. It's pretty good today but in my opinion, it needs to be even better. To their mostly illiterate counterparts of the early 1800s, the stories were beyond the scope of imagination. The tales were routinely filed in the category of fictional entertainment. John Coulter was the first of these Euro-Americans to bring back reports of the thermal areas. His listeners thought they were hearing the ravings of a deranged man. They laughed and scoffed at his descriptions, labeling the area Coulter's Hell. Our narrative begins with Coulter's discovery, the first of many, which led to the preservation of the wonderland we now call Yellow. The story starts near present-day Bismarck, North Dakota. The year was 1806. Lewis and Clark were returning from their exploration of the Oregon country. He recounted to a skeptical audience the facts of his adventures. He told of water spout. as cold as hell. The gold strikes in Idaho and Montana brought a population base close to the region. They established towns and cities. Uh, during the 1860s, gold strikes were made in Montana territory, uh, notably at Alder Gulch and uh, uh, up by Missoula. Several mining groups shoveled and panned their way through Yellowstone, looking for that elusive end of the rainbow. We do know he traveled along the western shores of Yellowstone Lake, and then followed along the Yellowstone River. He was probably the first Euro-American to also see scenes like these. It 
was the season of short days and cold, long nights. They visited the Lower Geyser Basin once again, where the year before he had witnessed and recorded two geysers. Days Dr. Hayden's party, along with That, that was made by folks who came on horse with a pack string. They were mounted. was important in another aspect of Yellowstone's history. With the Army came the manpower and authority to The Army had no use for him and they just tossed him out in his ear. He didn't have his permits and they dismissed him. And under its control, the park hotels, transportation, and visitation rights were established. It is an old center cone. That center cone is deposits of geyserite, which is the silica that's dissolved inside the hot thermal waters. That silica becomes deposited on top of these cones. That geyserite grows about one inch per 100 years. So you can imagine, just you guys will let my other people through. Just come on in and get a little cozy because it's going to get cozy up here. Everybody's going to come and want to see this. So it kind of gives us an idea how old this particular cone is. I'm not going to go into any other things about what I want. 
want you to look at right now is what's in front of me. It's called the Beehive's Indicator. This is not a predictable geyser, but as we talked about, as we started to come up here, there's lots of mysteries and there's lots of clues that we can unravel to give us an idea of what these things are doing, when they're going to erupt, and Beehive is a classic example of that. The indicator is, goes off for about anywhere between 20 to 34 minutes before an eruption on an average. Right now, the indicator eruption is approximately 22 to 24 minutes. What's going to happen is it's releasing the pressure, and you know how that pressure starts to build. And we haven't talked about the characteristics of, of geysers yet, but, it's, but we're going to talk about that. We're kind of we're doing a little impromptu. We're going to move our, our stuff around so we can see this go into eruption. As we know, Old Faithful goes into eruption about 130 to 150. This is a true fountain geyser. It shoots straight up in the air like a nozzle spray. The pressure is so great because there's constrictions. And keep in mind, this thing's going to go about 180 feet on an average. Sometimes it can reach up to 200 feet. So it's really spectacular. Here we go. Here we go. Enjoy this. It's truly rare. I'm going to get out of your way.
white myth of the whole Hey, how are you doing? Toys <laughs> hooking up. Toys, yeah, it is, <laughs> isn't it? It's always good to see this. Star is right on the other side of the Firehole River. You see where people are standing? Yeah.